Nicholas Flamel sat in front of the two matching LCD computer screens. William Shakespeare sat on his left while Josh hovered over their shoulder, trying to keep as far away from the English immortal as possible and breathe only through his mouth. When Shakespeare moved, he trailed an odor in his wake, but when he sat still, the stink gathered around him in a thick cloud. Palamedes and Sophie had gone outside to feed the dogs. Trust me, it is quite simple, Shakespeare explained patiently, eyes huge behind his glasses. The merest variation of the scrying spell a D taught me over 400 years ago. Should I mention at this point that the computer is turned off? Josh interjected, suddenly realizing what apparently no one else had. Only the screens are on. But we only need the screens, Shakespeare said enigmatically. He looked at the alchemist. D always used a reflective surface for scrying. Scrying? Josh frowned. He heard Flamel use the same word. What do you mean? From the ancient French word descrier, Shakespeare murmured, meaning to proclaim or to show. In D's case, it meant to reveal. When I was with him, he carried a mirror with him everywhere. Flamel nodded. His famous shoe stone or magical lens. I've read about it. He demonstrated it to Queen Elizabeth herself at his home in Mortlake, Shakespeare said. She was so terrified by what she saw that she ran from the house and never returned. The doctor could look into the lens and focus in on people in places across the world. Flamel nodded. I've often wondered what it was. Well, that sounds like a TV, Josh said quickly. Then he realized he was talking about something in the 17th century. Yes, very look like television, but without a camera on the other end to transmit the picture. It was a scrap of elder technology, Shakespeare added. A gift from his master. I believe it was an organic lens activated by the power of his aura. Whatever happened to it? Flamel wondered aloud. Shakespeare smiled tight-lipped. I stole it from him the night I ran away. I had a mind to keep it for myself and mayhap even use it against him, but then I realized that if it did, did link the, to his master, it probably linked his master to me. I dropped it in the Thames at Southwark, close to where we later built the Globe Theatre. I wonder if it's still there, Flamel muttered. No doubt it is lost beneath centuries of silt and mud, but never mind that. D could, and did, use any highly polished surface to scry. Mirrors, windows, glass, polished crystals. But then he discovered that liquids worked better. By applying his aura to a liquid, he could alter its properties, turn it reflective, and use it to look at people and places from across the globe, or from other times and places. With enough time and preparation, he could even look into the closest shadow realms. He could also use it to see through the eyes of animals or birds. They became his spies. He is astonishing. Fomel agreed, shaking his head in wonder. If only he had chosen to work with us against the Dark Elders. The Doctor usually used pre pure spring water, though I have known him to use snow, ice, wine, or even beer. Any liquid will do. Leaning forward, Shakespeare tapped the black plastic frame around the computer screen. And what do we have here but liquid crystal? The alchemist's pale eyes widened and he nodded slowly. From under the neck of his t-shirt, he pulled the tiny pair of pins he wore around his neck on a string and popped them onto his nose. Of course, he whispered. And the properties of liquid crystal can be altered by applying electrical or a magnetic charge. That changes the orientation of the crystals. He snapped his fingers and a tiny green spark no bigger than a pinprick appeared on his index finger. The foul-smelling hut was touched by the sharp fragrance of mint, and a curling smoke-like pattern immediately rolled down both screens. Flamel used his finger and both screens flashed white, then green, then abruptly turned into dull mirrors that reflected his face, framed by Shakespeare and Josh. I never would have thought of that. That's genius! Thank you, Shakespeare muttered, sounding a little embarrassed by the praise, blotches of color on his pale cheeks. What will you use as a mirror on the other end? Flamel asked. 
Spiderweb, the bard said surprisingly. I've found that whether it be at a palace or a hovel, there are always spiderwebs. The threads are always sticky with liquid and they make excellent magical mirrors. Flamel nodded again, obviously impressed. Now all we need is something that links you to Madame Perinelle. Nicholas peeled off the heavy silver bracelet that wrapped around his right wrist. Pernelli made this for me herself, he explained, lying it on the table. A little more than a century ago, a masked bounty hunter chased us across America. His guns were loaded with silver bullets. I think he thought us werewolves. Werewolves and silver bullets! Shakespeare coughed a quick laugh and shook his head. <clears throat> Lord, what fools these mortals are! I thought silver bullets worked against werewolves, Josh said. But I'm guessing not? No, Flamel said. I've always preferred vinegar. Or lemon, Shakespeare said. And pepper is a very reasonable alternative. He saw Josh's puzzled look and added. Spray it on them or throw it into their eyes and nose. They will stop and sneeze and that will give you time to escape. Vinegar, lemon, and pepper, Josh muttered. I'll remember to add them to my werewolf hunting kit. If I don't find any werewolves, I can always make a salad, Josh said sarcastically. Shakespeare shook his head. No, no, you would need a good olive oil for a salad, he said seriously. And olive oil is ineffective against any of the were clans. So very useful against Brooks and Strega, Flamel murmured absently as he created swirling fractal-like patterns on the two LCD screens. I was not aware of that, Shakespeare said. And how won one use... What happened to the bounty hunter? Josh interrupted, frustrated, trying to bring the conversation back on track. Oh, Pernelli ended up rescuing him from a tribe of Oma. Oma? Josh and Shakespeare asked together. Sasquatch Sakazavis, Flamel said, and for an instant, an image of a tall, primitive-looking, powerfully built human appeared on the screen. It was covered in long, reddish hair and carried a huge club made from a gnarled tree root. Bigfoot, he added. Bigfoot, of course! Josh shook his head. So you're saying there are Bigfoot? Big feet? In America? Of course, Flamel said dismissively. Well, primarily rescued the bounty hunter from the Oma, he continued, stroking the bracelet. He presented her with this silver bullet as a gift. A green spark crawled across the metal. I watched her melt down the silver bullets with her order and shaped each link. The scent of mint filled the hut again. Picking up the bracelet, the alchemist closed his fist around the metal band. She always said that a little of her was in this bracelet. And abruptly, both LCD screens blinked, and the trio found they were looking at Prunelle Flamel.